Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be making one of the most useful copper compounds there are on the planet, in my opinion, and that is basic copper carbonate. It's this formula over here, this wonderful compound. Um, it's just copper carbonate, but it's got a couple of hydroxyls coordinated to it. That's just how copper compounds are. Um, I'll get into that in future videos, but anyway, um, it's useful because you can make many, many other copper compounds from it. It's a highly insoluble compound, so it's easy to make, and when you react it with acids, in this case I've reacted it with hydrochloric acid, you end up with carbon dioxide, which goes out, of, goes away as a gas, of course, water, your solution's already made of water, and copper 2 chloride. So you have very pure copper 2 chloride, as long as you've added enough acid to react all of this. So you can make all sorts of other copper compounds, not limited to copper to chloride here, um, you know, nitrate, sulfate, whatever you want. Anyway, to make it is pretty easy. Uh, you just need a soluble copper 2 salt and a carbonate, a soluble carbonate salt as well. So, uh, or you can use bicarbonate actually, I'll get into that. Uh, I'm going to use copper 2 sulfate, it's a cheap uh, salt for me. You can use copper chloride or whatever you want, really any, any uh, acid salt of copper. Not a problem here. Um, sodium carbonate I'm going to use because it's cheaply available as pool pH up. It's designed to basify your pool. It's sold in bulk, really cheap, not a problem for this reaction. Works great and it produces only one CO2 on this side. If you use bicarbonate here, which works eh, I would say equally well, uh, you end up with two CO2s on this side of the reaction once the whole thing is balanced and that creates problems with foaming. And uh, so you have to add it a little more carefully. It can be done, but uh, not my preferred method. Anyway, uh, this copper two carbonate here, it's uh, basic copper carbonate, I should say, is quite insoluble in water, and so it will precipitate as a light blue precipitate, which will be filtered from the water, and then we can dry it and store it for future use. Anyway, that's about the gist of this video. Let's get to the lab and do it. The first thing to do, of course, is to weigh out the reactants, and then we'll get them dissolved in water. So I have here uh, 256 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate in the form of some uh, nice thick blue crystals. And I also have uh, 96 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate. And that's sort of just a white granular powder. I'm going to dissolve the copper sulfate in uh, 700 milliliters, roughly, of uh, hot water. And I'm going to dissolve the sodium carbonate in uh, roughly 200 milliliters of equally warm water. And these will need some significant stirring and heating to get all of this in solution. So I will essentially uh, get these stirring and then put them in the microwave and stir some more until they are both dissolved. I assure you they will go into solution. So sit tight while I go do that. Nearly there. I now have just about all the copper sulfate dissolved, forming this nice dark blue solution. However, my sodium carbonate isn't looking so good. You can see there aren't many solids left, but there is this milky suspension that's formed. That's typical for this uh, type of sodium carbonate. There may be some calcium impurities in it, which cause it to not fully dissolve. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this really fast through a uh, vacuum filter. You can use a coffee filter or something if yours looks like this, but uh, that's simply a consequence of using technical great reagents. You can also see there's a piece of dirt floating in it right there. And uh, since our final product is, we're going to filter our final product from the reaction mixture, all this stuff will end up in there if we don't filter it out now. I've set up here for vacuum filtration, although, like I said, you could use a coffee filter or something like that. And uh, we're just going to run this through a medium frit and see what happens. Get the vacuum started. Apologize about the noise. And you can see it's a little foggy, so I'm going to run it through a second time, and hopefully that will eliminate uh, the fog there. You can see it captured some interesting things. Alright, just a little hazy. Okay, I think that's about the best we're going to do. Turn off the vacuum. 
So you can see it's still a little hazy, but that's not a big deal because the copper two, uh, the basic copper two carbonate that we're going to filter from the solution has bigger particle size than this because we'll be able to catch that on a filter and this will go right through it. So now that we've got our reactants dissolved and prepared, it's time to conduct the reaction. I'm going to first, uh, I'm going to use this two, two liter beaker here because this is quite a big reaction. I'll first pour the copper sulfate solution into this beaker. Great color. There we go. And then finally, the sodium carbonate solution, which should immediately start to precipitate the basic copper two carbonate, as well as uh, give off a little bit of CO2. And there we go, you can see it's sort of chunked up. Let's give her a stir. We're now getting a little CO2. Just keep stirring to control that foam. This reaction will theoretically make 100 grams of basic copper 2 carbonate, which is this uh, toothpaste sort of color that's forming here. And I'll just give this uh, approximately 20 minutes to finish reacting while uh, watching the foam. It'll slowly subside over time. And uh, then we can go ahead and isolate the basic copper 2 carbonate. The mixture has now been sitting overnight. I had to go because of timing constraints. And you can see it's sort of a thick uh, teal mixture now. And what that is is a, a fine suspension of basic copper carbonate and uh, a bunch of water and then some excess of the, uh, the reagents that we added because, of course, you can't measure them out perfectly uh, molecule to molecule. So what we're going to do is go ahead and vacuum filter this to get the, uh, copper, the basic copper carbonate out. So this here is the apparatus. This is my largest filter funnel. It's got a porous glass frit on there, right? I used one of these earlier, just a smaller version. Unfortunately, this is the biggest jointed Erlenmeyer that I have, so I'm going to have to empty this repeatedly during, during this process, but uh, that's not really a big deal. So let's get the vacuum started, and again, I apologize for the noise that this may make. And uh, let's get going. Once each batch has become mostly dry, uh, wash it with about 100 milliliters of warm water to dissolve out any of the leftover sodium carbonate or copper sulfate. That's done by pouring it in all at once, followed by agitation, and then just pull the water out of it again. After each vacuum filtration is complete, I scrape the paste out of the filter funnel and place it into a suitable glass drying pan. Just like that, and then we're ready for the next batch. I can just go right down the sink, there's nothing particularly dangerous in it. I'm going to rinse the beaker down with a little hot water as well. Well, 
All right, and this is the very last batch. So, because this is on such a large scale, it's a little bit to get through, but uh, bear with me. And soon we will have this dried and stored. So you may be familiar with this method. I used it in the nickel oxalate uh, preparation here. We're just gonna take this pasty mix here and uh, put it on a hot water bath, which will accelerate the drying of this uh, by quite a lot. And by the end of the evening, I should have some dry powder. As a side note, when you're cleaning all this up, uh, you can see this frit has been quite badly stained by the basic copper carbonate. But it is uh, very reactive toward acids to form soluble copper salts, right? It's the reason we made this in the first place. So uh, all you have to do is run any common acid through here that has a soluble copper salt, and uh, that clears right up. So I've been soaking my equipment in this uh, jar here, which has um, a little bit of hydrochloric acid in it. And uh, this is getting the stir bar and all the equipment that I use clean. And so I'll just pour that in here and we should pretty easily be able to clean this filter. You can see the fizzing happening in there. That's uh, carbon dioxide, of course. And the uh, discoloration is almost gone at this point. I'll pull this through to get it into the frit. some more. And this is going to serve to clean everything else, the joint, the beaker below, the funnel, everything. Alright, so I've spread this out on the glass pan, as mentioned before, about as evenly as possible, and I've got it on top of a steaming water bath here. It's not quite boiling, it's just uh, set to simmer, it's just an electric pot, and this should get this stuff dry in no time. So. I'll leave this for a couple of hours, and we'll come by and stir it every so often. That should be about it. Okay, it's been a few hours, and you can see it's still very pasty, but it's also quite warm, and uh, you'll see it starts to change to this green kind of color. Uh, it's losing hydration water, so uh, as it does that, it goes through several weird stages where you'll have this blue, highly hydrated form, and this green, sort of less hydrated form, and as that water leaves, uh, it goes into the mixture and makes it a much more runny type of uh, type of paste here, but we're going to keep uh, drying it and uh, come back in a few hours when it starts to get uh, clumpy and we can turn it into a powder. Alright, so I left this on the water bath overnight and it looks like this now, sort of like a dry lake bed, and that's because you can see it's pretty much dry and uh, crumbly. So all I'm going to do now is just scrape this off the pan and then I'll grind it up and I pulverize it into a fine powder using the bottom of a beaker because these are you know, really, really brittle pieces here. And uh, once it's all crunched up, it'll be ready to store in a container for future use. And here's the final product, a fine free-flowing teal powder of basic copper 2 carbonate. I'll be using this in a number of upcoming videos to make other copper compounds with, so if you'd like to see those or be notified when I make them, please press the subscribe button. If you liked what you saw or you found it helpful, please press the like button, and uh, you can always leave me a comment as well, and I'll try and get back to as many as I possibly can. As always, thanks for watching.